So we're living in times where many are struggling with frustration and they're struggling with um, pride. That's one of the things that we struggle with now. And it's a very dangerous sin because pride can sneak up on you. But we're also struggling with anxiety. Um, whether you are a believer, uh, if you're not a believer, you need to become a believer. Um, we are struggling with these things. Um, whether that be because of what we went through um, a couple of years ago, people were stuck inside of their houses. Um, they were not able to communicate uh, with each other. And God said that it is not good for man to be alone. What does that mean? We need communication. We need each other. For, for sake not the assembling of God. Why does God want us to be together uh, praying and fasting and worshiping his name together? Uh, because there's strength in a coming together. There's strength and praying together with your brother or your sister. There's strength in worshiping together. Uh, when they tried to build the tower up to heaven, even God himself said that they was going to succeed because of their coming togetherness. Um, so God had to separate them by the tongue. He had to separate their language so that they could not understand each other. Um, but let me help you on how to get away from this frustration and this anxiety that you've been struggling with. I, I'm going to teach on pride. That's a whole nother lesson. Pride is something that is very sneaky. It's very, um, it's, it's very, it, let's, let's, let's call it, let's, let's call it something that, um, is not very, it's, it, it's not self-aware. Um, you're not, you're not aware of it. it. It can come up on you and you not even know that it's dead. Um, so that's another teaching um, that needs to be taught. But let's teach on how you can get away from this frustration that you've been feeling and this anxiety that you've been having. Um, first, if you, if you have a piece of paper, uh, you can write this down if you need to. Uh, I'll leave this video up. You can go and get you a sheet of paper and write this down. Uh, you need peace. Uh, you need peace. Number two, a renewed mind. You need a renewed mind. You need a renewed mind. Number three, number three, you need to please the Father. You need to please the Father. How do you please the Father? We'll show you that in a second. Go with me to Philippians 4, 6. And this is the Amplified Version. Just so that you can get a clear understanding of what we're saying. The Lord is near. Uh, do not be anxious about anything. Uh, I love that. Do not be anxious about anything. Instead, uh, in every situation, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, tell your request to God. Uh, and the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, so if we're trying to get rid of this anxiety, well, first of all, he tells you not even to be anxious. Instead, in every situation, prayer and petition. So I'm going in prayer and I'm going in petition and thanksgiving. So I'm going to the courtrooms. I'm going in the secret place and I'm going to the... the courtroom and when I go to the courtroom I'm going to the throne when I go to the throne I'm coming humbly yes I'm coming humbly but I'm also coming boldly the word says that I can come boldly before his throne uh huh if the enemy can make a petition against you if he can lift up something against you if he lift up something against Job if he went into the courtrooms and spoke with God about the laws and how things should be then certainly we have a right to go before our father and we go before him humbly and boldly before him and we go before him with thanksgiving uh-huh we go before him with thanksgiving but what else do we go to him with 
uh, we go to him with faith. That's in Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Uh -huh. We've come before him to the throne. We've Now we've come before him in prayer. We come before the throne. We know to come before him humbly and boldly. But we come to him humbly and boldly with faith. Uh -huh. We're not trying to convince God of anything. We're, he doesn't need your convincing. No, no, no. He doesn't need your convincing. Um, that's something that we do with people. You Let me give you an example. Um, you try to convince the manager um, on an interview that you need that job. Uh -huh. Some of you, you try to convince somebody to marry you. You try to convince friends to be with you, uh, to continue to be your friend. You try to convince um, even yourself that you're worthy. Uh -huh. the, uh, you try to convince yourself that you are this uh, physically beautiful, that you're more than enough. Uh -huh. uh, let me tell you that that's not going to work. Um, that same logic that you have uh, with trying to convince yourself and quote unquote trying to cause yourself to have uh, good vibes or positive energy that's not going to work with the throne that's work that's not going to work with the father here's how things work in the heavens first we go to prayer uh-huh we go to prayer are you following yeah uh, um we go to prayer uh -huh. Once we go in prayer, we're going, that prayer takes us uh, in our secret place. It takes us to the court rooms. It takes us before the throne. We're coming before the throne humbly and boldly, and we're coming with faith, uh, not with murmuring, not with complaining. Uh, we're asking uh, God. We're making our requests known unto him. Uh, we're not trying to convince him, but we are making our requests known unto him, and we're doing it with faith. We're doing it in faith, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for the he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I'm constantly seeking his face. I'm seeking him first. What is Matthew 6, 33? Say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things things shall be added unto you. So you're looking for the things, but you're not seeking him. Uh -huh. So you're in reverse when you really should be seeking the father. And then the things will come to you automatically. Uh -huh. That's why we don't worry. That's why we don't worry. That's why we don't worry about the things um, be coming to us. We don't worry about um, what, when are we going to get these things? Um, when are we, when are we going to get married? Uh, -huh. when are we going to get the job? When are we going to get the promotion? Um, when are we going to be, uh, elevated? When are we going to get the things that you, we have been longing for? Um, Romans 12 chapter two, uh, we need a renewing of the mind. We need a renewing of the mind. We need a renewing of the mind and to be conformed to this world be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god so i don't want my will i want the will of god uh-huh and when i get the will of god i get a renewed mind uh, lean not on thy own understanding but lean on his understanding uh-huh i need a transform mind. I don't need to look on my own understanding because my own understanding will fail me. If I try to think about it with my natural mind, I'll tear it up. I'll try to make logical sense out of this. Don't try to make sense out of what God is doing in your life. You can't fully ever understand the mind of God. He's beyond us. His ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Uh -huh. But I'm keeping my faith. I'm keeping my faith that whatsoever I shall ask, as long as, long as it be in the Father's will, I shall have it because he's spoken in his word. I can decree and declare things because he said it in his word. As long as I be in the Father's will, if as long I, I'm not trying to be, um, I'm not trying to convince him that I'm worthy. 
I'm worthy of the things that I'm praying for because truth of the matter is, is that I'm not worthy of the things that I'm praying for, uh, but rather that he, by grace, ye are saved. Uh, by grace, ye are saved, not by my works, um, because I have not done anything. I have not done anything worthy. Only King Jesus uh, has done anything that is worthy to be praised of. He's the one that died on the cross for us. He's the one that did all the work. He's the one that paid the price. Uh, so you're trying to do things throughout your own strength. Do things throughout your own mind. Uh -huh. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Uh -huh. And faith without works is dead. So I'm doing the works, yes. Should we do the works? Yes. But without the faith, you don't even have the works. And without the works, you don't have the faith. One without the other uh, doesn't do any good. So first, I need to have the faith. I need to have the faith that this thing can be done. And then I, and then I need to go out and do it as if I know the thing is already done. Because the Father said it was already done. Because he said, if I ask for it, and faith without works is dead. She so said, if I ask for it, then it's, it's already done, as long as it be in the Father's will. So I'm moving now. I'm moving now, despite what it looks like, despite what it seems like, uh, it, how it's going. I'm, I'm moving as if it's already done, even if I don't see it, even if it doesn't make sense. I'm moving in that direction. The faith the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. I'm walking towards what he wants me to walk towards. I'm walking towards my destiny. I'm walking towards my purpose. I'm walking towards the things that he's called me to do. Um, if I am to have a renewed mind, if I am to think different, I must first give up what I'm thinking and ask the Lord for his thoughts. I must ask the Lord what is his will for my life, not my will but yours be done. Father, uh, Jesus, I'm, uh, he's in the garden of Gethsemane, not my will but yours be done. Turns out that he dies on the cross and now he he is ascended. He has ascended into heaven. Now he's on the right hand side of the Father. Now he's ruling and reigning. He's ruling and reigning. Now he's he's ascended into the heavens. Um, he sent the only uh, Holy Spirit for us to be our peace and to be our comfort. Uh, but if we don't do it, if we watch this, if we don't do it the way that God wants it, and we do it the way that we want it to be, um, we often take up more time. More time is wasted because now look, look at this. God has to now go back and do things his way. He, he'll let you do it your way because he is not a person who is going to force you to do anything he's given us free will he's given us a free will to do the things that we want to do we can make decisions that we want to do uh, but in the end you're going to end up going back to him anyways uh, so you might as well give up your own will to him because uh, you're going to end up be, being before him saying lord what do i do next um, so you might as well begin with a heart because with a heart of of surrenderance uh, many will say well brother jonathan that's too much that you, you you're doing too much it doesn't take all that to always ask God what you should do in every single situation I beg I beg to differ because when you are not asking God what his will is for your life in every single situation um, as I've as I've already said you end up doing it the father's way anyway come on Paul it's hard for thee to kick against the prick Keep trying to do it your way. Mm -hmm. Keep trying to do it your way. And you're going to fail every time. You're going to fail every time. Do it God's way. You might go through some trials. You might go through some tribulations. But all things work together for the good of them that believe in the Lord. So even when I'm in my test, even when I'm in my trial, I know that, now this is crazy faith now. 
I call this crazy faith, but even when you're in the test and even when you're in the trial, we're believing that even the test and even the trial is literally a tool by God to push you into his will and his purpose. Mm. Even if it's pain, even if it's in a, a situation that you don't understand, God is using it. That's the mind. That's the, See, that's what happens when you have a renewed mind. And that's what ha happens when you have peace that is beyond understanding. You know, you have now you have a mindset that even this test and this trial that I'm going through is working for my favor. It's working for my good. This is a test um, uh, uh, that is being used by my God to push me into my destiny, to push me into my purpose, to push me into what God has called for me to do uh, is working for my good. And God, out of all things, is, is going to get the glory out of this. He's going to get the glory out of this test. He's going to get the glory out of this trial. So I want to leave that with you. Peace, a renewed mind, and pleasing God. Peace of a new mind and pleasing God. And pleasing God. That's how I get out of my frustration. That's how I get out of my anxiety. Is when I cast my cares upon the Lord. When I lean not on my own understanding. Uh, when I go into prayer. When I go to the courtrooms. When I come before him humbly and boldly. When I come with to him not with murmuring or complaining or trying to convince him. But when I come to with faith and I come to him with his word saying, Lord, you told me all I had to do was ask in your name. As long as it be in your will, it shall be done. Faith. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come out. Jesus says, come. Everybody else is left on the boat. Are you going to worry about the people who are still on the boat, or are you going to walk in faith? Like Jesus told you, go. Are you going to, sometimes Jesus tells you to walk on something um, that is not common. He always tells you to do something that seems like it's impossible. He tells you to go a route that seems like it's impossible with men. But with God, all things are possible to him that believe. You just must first believe. You got to have the faith for it. Where's your faith? Where's your faith?